To the Puritan mind, the spirit was central in, in preaching. So they would say, we need the Holy Spirit twice for every sermon. We need him in the, in, in the study when we're preparing it. We need him uh, on the pulpit when we preach it. And so also in the preparation, the typical Puritan pastor would frequently get down on his knees in the preparations. Oh God, Spirit of God, help me. Help me to grasp this text deeper. I don't just want to master the text. I want the text to master me. Because as Bunyan said, I never did preach a sermon. I never preached a sermon that I did not painstakingly feel myself. And painstakingly doesn't just mean pain. It means it just got into me. And that's in the Puritan mind. That, that, that text has to master you before you get in the pulpit. That's the work of the Spirit. And then when you go to the pulpit, oh, the cries and the sighs and the fearing and the trembling, even as you go in the power of the Spirit. Like Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, I, I went before you with fear and trembling, and yet with expectation in the power of the Spirit, because God's Word never returns to me void, to him void. So this codependency, if I may use that word, despite the baggage associated with, with the Holy Spirit. I'm a co-laborer with the Holy Spirit when I get on the pulpit. And so like John Calvin said, and Puritans would really embrace this, there are two preachers in every sermon. So I'm preaching the word. As I'm preaching the word, the Spirit's taking that word, taking it like arrows and putting it into his bow and shooting it out over the congregation, directing every arrow to each soul's need and giving each person what they need from that particular sermon. That's a very high view of preaching. Because then, you see, as long as I'm preaching biblically, I'm expositing, expository preaching, expositing the Bible faithfully, as long as I'm doing that faithfully, I can rest assured the Holy Spirit is going to be applying it, and particularly the more so as I get to the experiential parts of my sermon preach about the fullness of Christ and preach about uh, how you can live out this text. Um, I, I like to think of it this way, that the Puritans would say something like this. This isn't a direct quote, so it's kind of my words, but especially when the minister gets to Christ in the sermon, after he's wounded the soul and leads the soul to Christ, for example, the spirit gets very, very active because his greatest delight is to take the things of Christ and apply them to the soul. And then the Puritans also, also would focus on after the sermon, that Satan would come and, and, and take the message away. Um, and so they would go to their homes and get down on their knees in their bedroom and cry out to God for blessing afterward. How many preachers do that today? But Joseph Alliance said a preacher must go from his knees to the sermon, from his sermon back to his knees. And uh, so that just shows you their dependency. Thomas Watson said, a minister may come and knock on men's hearts, but the Spirit has the key to the heart and he must come and open the door. So you see how totally dependent the Puritan preacher was on the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Puritan mind, this is not only a good thing, but an encouraging thing. Because guess what? If I get up on the pulpit and <laughs> people come to me afterwards and say, oh, you know, the Lord used that sermon for my conversion. And if I could somehow do it, I'm going to become proud. And as soon as I become proud, I become useless. So the fact that the Holy Spirit has to do the work makes me not only dependent on the Holy Spirit, but also makes me joyful and encouraged because what the Spirit does will last forever. And so when I get up on the pulpit, yeah, am I nervous? You bet I'm nervous. I'm speaking as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. This, this is huge. Now I'm not nervous the way I was nervous the first time I preached, but there's still this tension. I think it's a good tension inside the preacher of total dependency. Oh God, help me. This is a major event. This is the biggest event of the life of the people of God when they gather in corporate worship. Uh, the Puritans called it the highlight of our lives, the market day of the soul. I mean, the living God of heaven and earth is coming to speak to all of us through you who is sufficient for these things. I need the Holy Spirit.